All right, we got a fun one today. What we're looking at here in this video is the most efficient electric car ever made. It's a, it's a prototype car, but it's super cool. It's called the Vision EQXX by Mercedes. It's right here with me. Not a lot of people have seen this thing. And the reason I wanna look at in this video is because there are a lot of things that they had to do in the name of efficiency to get as much range as possible on one charge that actually translate to electric cars that we see today. So a lot of what I'm gonna walk around and show you guys, you can, you can trace to a lot of the other cars we've seen, why electric cars are shaped the way they are, why they do what they do. Hopefully there's not too much noise while I shoot this, but let's take a closer look at the most efficient electric car, the only one to get so far a thousand kilometers of range on one charge. So this is the car, this is what it looks like. And there are a lot of things I wanna point out here. First of all, the shape. So electric cars are shaped a certain way in a lot of ways because they're trying to slip through the air and be as aerodynamically efficient as possible. So they're already heavier than normal, but if you wanna maximize how far you can go, you need to minimize the resistance to going that far. And so there's two main factors for resistance when you're driving a car like this. Those would be rolling resistance with the tires on the ground and air resistance. So when we look at air resistance, you look at this frontal area and this has the lowest drag coefficient of any car ever. Again, this isn't a production car, but 0.17. And there are a bunch of reasons why, mainly because this is entirely perfectly optimized, literally in every square inch to be as efficient and smooth as possible. Look at this. So let's start down here at the front. First of all, you've got what looks like a pretty normal face. You've got the headlights and you've got this bar light across the front. But then you've got a bunch of aerodynamic elements. These two flaps right here can open or close on command based on how fast you're going. And the entire idea is to get the air to slip over the top of the car as smoothly as possible with as little turbulence as possible. So you've got these outlet areas here to relieve the pressure as air goes through the front so there's no front trunk. This logo, <laughs> this logo is a sticker which does two things, saves a little bit of weight but also doesn't disturb the airflow as it goes over the hood of the car. You've got these side curtains over here, which means air is gonna go slip in here. And a huge reason on a lot of these cars, electric cars that you see with, I'll say, uglier, not the best looking wheels, is because they're trying to be aerodynamically efficient. And this is just about as aerodynamically efficient as you can possibly have a wheel. They have specially designed tires with a rounder front area and lower rolling resistance. They're pretty narrow. And so when the air gets through this channel here, it smoothly goes over the side of this tire through that channel and bends around the car with no disturbance. Again, this is not a car that's like shipping today. This is more of a demonstration of what happens when you combine all of the different optimizations you could possibly throw into one car to be as efficient as possible. So certain cars today will have a sort of a balancing act where they use some of these things to be efficient, but then have to make sacrifices on other things. So if you have nice looking wheels, you have efficient wheels. So we'll keep going down the side here. This is a pretty small side view mirror, and you might've seen that there was a previous version of this car that had a camera. What they told me is that they switched to these small side view mirrors because when you have cameras instead of mirrors, you do get a little bit better aerodynamics, but that also means you need to show the display, on the display in the car, the feed from the cameras all the time. And that amount of tax on the system was roughly the same as the amount of energy saved from using cameras instead of mirrors. So we have small efficient mirrors now, which is cool. We'll do the interior in a second, but you have flush door handles, which of course is going to help you slip through the air even better. Here's your back door handle back flat wheel and then you get to the back of the car and here this is that this is that long tail design this is really slipping through the air so when we get to the back of the car here this is really more along the lines of things that you would really only see in a prototype like this and you would not see at least currently in a car on the road maybe in the future but at least not currently because what we're looking at is an extremely long footprint and this entire sloping shape it is kind of sporty, but it is designed to sort of be shaped like a teardrop in the most aerodynamically efficient shape possible. And then you get to the back. Yes, there are rear lights, and you can see those lights, Vision EQXX up here. But down at the bottom here is a bit of an active aerodynamics hack. So there are certain cars with longer tails, and we've seen these. This specifically is the rear diffuser of this car because the bottom of the car has to be aerodynamically efficient, just like the rest of it. 
And when they actually extend this rear diffuser out, you can choose to do that at certain speeds or just manually enable it. That gets you a few points of aerodynamic efficiency. It actually brings it from 0.18 to 0.17. So the whole back of this car gets a little bit longer when that active diffuser sort of pops out. So now we should talk for a second about solar panels on cars. Something you might've seen if you've seen this car in the, in the press before is there are solar panels up in this whole greenhouse here. So it's got this really nice soft A-pillar sloping up to sort of cut through the wind. And then from here, you've got solar panels all the way over the back of the car, all the way down to the back here, which is cool. Um, but like I said, cars these days are making a lot of trade-offs in the types of things they want to add. How many of these factors are they going to include to be the most efficient car possible? And I hear a lot about adding solar panels to electric cars. You might have heard about the Aptera and things like that. I'll just say I don't really buy the idea of only going by a solar. I don't think it's realistic in most climates to get all, I mean, it's just a math equation basically to be able to drive entirely on solar. But if you do have enough solar area, you can actually offset some of the energy required to drive. This entire sheet here, which is a massive mount on this car, can on a sunny day in perfect conditions, which is not this, uh, give you three, 400 watts of power, which is pretty good. But as it starts raining here, I'm just gonna open this door handle and pop inside so I can show you the interior of the car and talk about driving efficiency. So this uh, is a cozy interior, definitely, for a couple reasons. And again, this is where you'll start to see reasons why. You don't see every single one of these optimizations in any single electric car out, but you'll see a lot of some of this stuff. So first of all, the roof is solid because there are solar panels over me, so it feels a little bit less like a, like a glass ceiling in so many of the cars with sunroofs. Also, because of that sloped shape, uh, Smaller back seats, not the biggest back seats in the world, and a uh, very, very low headroom area behind me. So I'd rather be in the front seat, to put it lightly. But just looking around now, we're thinking about ways to make as little energy as possible come from the actual driving experience of this car. So they have this huge horizontal display across the entire middle. And number one, it is a micro LED display. So in areas where it is pitch black, it will be saving a little bit of energy, just tiny little bits of things like that. And I think that's uh, that's mostly where I see solar on a car being the most useful. If you have a 100 kilowatt hour battery and you leave the car outside all day, getting, I'll be generous, 500 watts of power, all day, that's that's going to give you a couple of miles and a couple percent points back, which is ideal. But the second you get a day like this, well, then you're going to have to plug it in anyway. And this car can still plug in, of course. Um, but the, the things that are efficient and interesting about this car is there are still weight savings everywhere. These these are these are thin carpets, also made of recyclable materials. These door handles out here are little pull tabs instead of extra material for the door handles. There's a lot of carbon fiber under the hood and the shell of this car is really lightweight materials. I still think they could have gone a little bit extra because let's be honest, when you look at an interior, you want comfort and luxury. So you do want big, cushy, soft leather and heated seats and heated steering wheel and things that all add weight and take extra power. But it's gonna depend on the type of car. If you're looking at an EQS, they're gonna go ahead and give you those comfort features where if you're looking at a sports car, maybe they can save a little weight, not do so much of that stuff. But look at these designs. There's so many of these like hole cutouts. Like if this was solid, it would be more weight, wouldn't it? But now it's a 3D printed, almost pseudo plastic. So it's got a lot less weight in here. These are the air conditioning vents, which are working right now, but I imagine those are pretty lightweight. A lot of weight savings over here. Got my pull tab, also a very, uh, visually interesting. The Mercedes engineers have been very kind enough to like share a lot of the interesting numbers and the development process behind the scenes with me and it's really cool stuff and that's how I know about the things like that this car is rear wheel drive uh, for efficiency and that it has a 100 kilowatt hour battery and is electronically limited to 140 kilometers an hour. Again just to slip through the air and be as efficient as possible. I'm gonna see if maybe they let me drive it. Maybe I might ask them about that. But even on the screen, they're just they're just going right to efficiency, talking about, okay, if you want to open or close the shutter in the front of the car, that'll change the aerodynamic properties. If you want to open or close the diffuser, you can do that on the screen too. And really the whole philosophy behind all of this software in this car as you're driving it is basically the, the gamification 
of efficiency, of efficient driving. Because first of all, the actual graphics on the display are powered by a game engine. They are showing all of the things that it's measuring basically in real time, just like your speedometer. All of the efficiency and all of the energy usage is shown in real time. And then it'll show, it'll display the best route for ideal driving to maximize how much range you're going to get when you arrive. It'll show you exactly how to accelerate and what speed to go up and down certain hills. You don't want to accelerate too fast because then the graphics will turn red and so you'll slow down a little bit with some regen, it'll turn back to blue again. It's doing all this for you. It even shows real-time wind speed on the screen in the car and that's thanks to special sensors. There's a couple little punch outs on the outside of the car that are measuring air pressure and measuring the wind speed because that does determine how far you're able to go and how efficient you're being. So it's like everything in this car is designed to basically let you hypermile every time you drive. Again, it's not what you'd see in most cars. Most cars are finding a balancing act between being sporty or being comfortable or being luxurious or somewhere in that Venn diagram. And this one is just full on efficiency, turn the knob all the way up on all those things. So as we open this door handle here the number we've ended up with that this car was able to achieve is 745 miles on a single charge without stopping that's the shape that's the efficiency maximum that's what we're able to do with today's technology with the knobs turned all the way up with the best technology mercedes has got now you can see if you were designing a car like this for yourself you might have different thoughts about certain parts of this that you would take. Maybe if you have an ideal car in mind where you take some of the aero cap wheels and maybe that's more efficiency. Maybe you take the smaller mirrors on the side. Maybe you'd even take the, the sticker right here, save a little bit of weight, save a little bit of aero, and you get closer and closer and closer to that maximum number. You probably don't end up going with this for a street car, but the fact that this has done all of those things is really eye-opening to see where we're at with electric cars right now. So, super cool. I was glad to see it.